guess what showed up at my house today? The brown truck finally came. I'm waiting for this for about two weeks. So what's in there you say? Well, let's take a look see. Get out a knife. UPS package from the States. I have been waiting for Bailey's online. We finally got our all the uh, information right. Everything that I needed. <coughs> Excuse me. There you go. I got the uh, small log Granberg International Mill. And as you can see there, it says bar and chains on the inside. Because recently I bought. Nice new electric Makita chainsaw. This has a 16 inch bar on it. I want an 18 inch bar and I wanted some ripping chains. So I called the good folks at Bailey's and uh, put a little package together. Ooh, I'm excited to get into this. Let me tell you. So I've got two ripping chains that'll fit. The 18 inch bar that I bought for this uh, saw, I wish I could get a 20 inch, but apparently they don't make it. But I might find another 20 inch that's not actually made for the saw that'll fit. But anyways, ooh, nice new bar. So I'm going to have an 18 inch bar on my saw that I can then put on this mill. I guess this is called the small log milling attachment. So it's only connected on one end, not on two ends like the larger units. Why did I make this? Why did I make this purchase? Why didn't I just build another one? Well, I've been really busy lately and I got a bunch of work coming that's, uh, you know, it's paying work. And so for me to spend a lot of time making something you know, spend hours of time in my workshop making something when I'm getting paid good money to, to work for somebody. Why not just spend the money? I mean, this was, uh, I guess, with the shipping, because shipping's expensive in Japan, with the new longer bar, and a, that's a, not a cheap bar, that's a, that's a good bar. The new longer bar, the two ripping chains, and the uh, small, small log milling attachment. I think it was just right around 300 bucks. Well, okay, 300 bucks. Sure, but the amount of money I'm getting paid to work, that's like half a day's work or a little, well, half, half of a long day's work doing other things. So I just thought, you know what? I'm going to buy this and just put it together and use it because I got, a, I got a, a bunch of wood that I like to slab up. And some of it's been sitting for too long, and I'm getting cracking and checking on the ends of the on the logs, and it's just and it's also in the way, and I'd like to get it done. So I decided to spend the money, get the tool built, and put together, and just go at it instead of spending. You know, I don't think I could build something this quality. I don't think I could build it in, let's say, five hours, and if I work for five hours doing some of the paid work that I'm getting right now I can buy all this stuff so even if I built this I'd still have to buy the chain and I have to buy the bar so you know I, I don't think I could build this in three hours so not, not at this quality level anyway. so that's my rationalization for spending 300 bucks so I'm gonna uh, point the camera back down here and uh, then I'm gonna put it on kind of a fast forward mode and uh, put this thing together and put the saw together and uh, just take you along for the ride
Okay, that seems to be it. Couple things. Um, feel this plastic stuck on here, kind of a pain in the butt, but it'll come off, I guess. Plastic from the shrink wrap is kind of stuck on lots of surfaces here, like like a little varnish on there almost. It's like, anyways, uh, it'll come off. In the instructions here, they clearly show that on the handle grip, you put two of these long nuts. Well, if I did that, I wouldn't have two long nuts for here, so I put a short one. And the thing I noticed, because I have a short nut, so either I should have had one more long nut, or, uh, see what it says here, number six, uh, coupling nuts, I should have four. And I have one, two, three, four, so the instructions are wrong. Now you tightening this, it's a bit hard because the flanges here on the side of the handle kind of get in the way of the tool, but it, it's okay. So the next thing I'm going to do is put the chainsaw on to the to the uh, the milling jig here. But one of the things I want to do before I do that is this saw has some dogs on here, and the bar is only 18 inches, and I'd really like to get as much out of this as possible. That's only another half inch, but I well I'm not going to do it right now, but. I could remove this dog here from the from the saw. This this dog here that you use for you know gripping your log as you're cross cutting. Um, if I use this saw to do any any uh, cross cutting, I could obviously just easily put it back on. But I just wanted to point out that you could uh, quite easily put the uh, saw this whole jig together, and you could take the dogs off of your saw to give yourself an extra half inch or longer. I guess now I'm going to put this on the saw. Get it on there somewhere. There we go. Now, it might actually be easier to do this without this part of the, without this big floppy top part on here. I can just loosen this off. And remove this part for now. Yeah, that's a lot easier. Zag here because you gotta careful not to cut yourself on your nice sharp chain. But this has got to go in here. Probably not even on camera anymore. Sorry about that. I'm trying to tighten this thing up here. I was concerned that I wouldn't be able to use this jig on this saw, so I asked uh, the good folks at Bailey's, and uh, they came back with an answer in a fairly timely manner, saying, absolutely no problem, this saw will fit on, or this uh, jig, milling rig jig, will fit on, I'm trying to line it up right here, so this bar with the two nuts that clamp onto there, that this will definitely fit, and they are correct, it definitely fits, with room to spare I would say, oh, I think that looks pretty good, I guess you don't want to over tighten it, but they got to be tight too, because there's two of them, you got to make sure you Tighten them both down. Okay, so that's basically on there, I think. And put this back on. Lower this down to. Now I'm going to just put it. How about put it at the two inch mark just for fun right now? Just to adjust this so that the uh, 
the saw is in the middle. So I think I ought to slightly change this around a bit, just a little bit. It just needs to ever so slightly. I would like to pivot this so that the the bar is more centered on the jig. Right now it's kind of sitting a little bit forward. I move it now. I guess that kind of makes some and don't smack it with the palm of your hand. Hmm, looking pretty good. I have to say that this bottom piece here is certainly well constructed. There's no way I could make this in four or five hours. And you know me, I like to make a lot of stuff myself, but there's no way I could make a jig this this good in uh, a fairly short amount of time that uh, I could be doing paying work for somebody else and then use that money of course to pay for the jig. So it says move this so that the end of the uh, end of the plastic here covers the uh, I think that's it was a little long, I think. That's a little more realistic, I think. And tighten that up. Right now I'm not super tightening everything because I'm not exactly sure how this is all going to work eventually, but pretty tight. Snug anyways. Tighten these plexiglass parts. Something else I can see myself doing is rounding these corners off because boy, that looks like something that's just going to bang really hard. Now, let's see what else the instructions say here. Well, it says I'm done. I like that. And I have, strangely enough, I have two washers left over. I can't really see where they, where they would possibly go. I mean, there's a washer there, there's a washer there, there's washers under there, there's a washer under there, there's a washer there, there's a washer under there, on top and bottom. There's a lock washer, lock washer, these what they're calling aircraft washers. I don't really get where that extra washer would go. I just don't. I do not see where it would go, these two extra washers. Maybe they just give me spares. I'll have to read the instructions again and see what it says. Honestly, cannot see where they go. So, two spare washers. Bonus. So, I have assembled my Granberg small log milling jig. What do you think? I think I'm going to get a decent cut. Let's see what the tape measure says. The tape measure says oh, I'll get 15, 15 and a half inches. I take that other half inch of uh, that, that dog out of there, I get a full 16 inch, inch cut, which maybe for this electric saw is kind of, you know, uh, about right because the saw originally came stock with a 16 inch bar on it. So by losing the two inches for the jig and putting an 18 inch bar on it, kind of makes sense that this would be about the perfect size. I'm not going to overstress the the bar or anything like that, or the motor and the saw, I guess I should be saying. Yeah, Exploded diagram here. Can 
Now let's see where those extra bits go. Interestingly enough, this shows this tool riding in here. Guess that's not a bad spot to put it, I guess. Put a little slice in the end of that. Stick the tool in there. That's actually a pretty good spot to keep that tool, isn't it? Well, there you go. Took me about half an hour, I guess. Uh, of course, the way that goes, the second time I do it, I could do it much faster. Hmm, interesting. So, uh, there's the small log, log jig. The small Gramberg small chainsaw, chainsaw, small log chainsaw mill. Now, the thing I wanted to check was kind of kind of eyeballing it, but I got two inches there, I got two inches there. And it's pretty straight. I imagine you have to go slow. I mean, the other bigger mills have another piece on this end which attaches to here, but of course, you do that, you lose a lot of end, a lot of size off the end of your bar, so um, this one doesn't. Anyways, the saw that I'm using here is the Makita UC4030A. This is a 16 inch or 400 millimeter electric chainsaw. Um, I've not really ever used it, but uh, it seems to be a really good saw. I like the way that the design of it is has the motor kind of in line with the saw instead of hanging off to one side like a lot of the electrics. Uh, this saw is fairly new. They don't sell it in Japan yet. They're still selling the old style of saw in Japan. They don't sell this one yet. I really like the fact that the uh, the chain, you can tighten the bar and adjust the chain here. No tools needed. And uh, if you saw when I put the bar on, the bar and the chain on, that all went pretty smooth. Um, you know, it's a little bit tricky always, but it went on pretty good. So anyways, um, fortunately this weekend I'm busy with the uh, Ballon Dori Festival here in, in town, the dancing festival. We sell beer in the park at the festival. One of the things my shop does, and uh, my liquor shop, that's my other business. And so I'm busy with that, so I won't be unfortunately firing this uh, saw up and running it through some logs till next week sometime, but there it is. Uh, I'm quite impressed. The build quality on this piece of machinery is exceptional. I'm guessing that this particular aluminum, heavy duty aluminum bracket here with this hole in it and stuff, this must be the same one they use on the larger mill. And uh, so they've just used it. I, I, you could probably buy, a, 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 I think they even sell a, a, a kit to convert this. Basically you use this piece and this and then you would buy another one of these and another one of these and put it down here with some longer pieces to make the full size mill. So you kind of have, for less than it would cost you to buy both mills, you could probably have kind of, uh, with the bits and pieces, you could have two mills if you wanted it. So uh, I'm quite excited about this. I'm hoping it's going to work really well. That's it. Thanks a lot.